Renault's fourth generation Megan family hatchback is now a smarter proposition in more ways than one. If you're shopping for something Focus or Astra shaped in this segment, it'll probably no longer be one of the first cars you'll immediately think of, but this updated Mark IV model is clever, sensible and very good looking, especially in this Sport Tour estate guys. The Megane is better equipped for the money than most of its rivals and there's now the option of a clever E-Tech plug-in hybrid powertrain if you want it. In short, this model line has a lot of life left in it yet. So, what's it like on the move? Well, as ever with the Megane, there's quite a difference between the sporting Renault Sport tuned models and the more mainstream variants that most customers actually choose. Uh, these are relatively softly sprung with steering tuned for comfort rather than engaging drive dynamics, although Renault has sharpened it up a bit as part of the facelift changes made here. Uh, to feel that, you have to play around a little with the driving mode settings, which alter steering feel, throttle response, uh, stability control settings and the automatic gear change timings to suit the way that you want to drive. With this facelifted model the comfort mode now has a lighter steering feel while in sport the steering gets 25% firmer and the engine mapping offers up to 25% more torque for what's supposed to be a more dynamic drive. In truth, there isn't really very much about mainstream Megans that delivers that, particularly now that Renault has banished the more powerful engines from the range. Only the 300 horsepower 1.8 litre petrol unit used in the separate Megan RS hot hatch remains. Otherwise, the conventional part of the engine lineup is now based entirely on just two power plants. Uh, they're both four cylinder units. There's either a 1.3 litre petrol TCE 140 with 140 horsepower or a 1.5 litre blue DCI diesel with 115 horsepower. In both cases, customers can choose between a six speed manual gearbox or a seven speed dual clutch auto. Uh, the other engine option is the rather interesting E-Tech plug-in hybrid 160 horsepower petrol power plant we're trying here. Uh, this is a 1.6 litre petrol engine mated to two electric motors powered by a 9.8 kilowatt hour 400 volt battery which allows a range of about 30 miles. There's an unusual clutchless auto transmission that works with three drive modes, all electric pure which can be locked in with a fascia EV button, a combustion engine sport and MySense which is a hybrid setting that's engineered to use both power sources most efficiently. Just how efficient a combination this can be is referenced by this PHEV derivative's official WLTP figures, up to 217.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 30 grams per kilometre of CO2, which in turn delivers a super low 10% benefit in kind taxation rating. Although this fourth generation began has been on sale since 2016, it's entirely possible that you may not be especially familiar with it given its relative scarcity on British roads, in which case you'll come fresh to this Mark IV model's rather eye-catching looks with its clever use of lighting effects uh, complemented on hatch variants and this Sport Tour estate model by a low-slung stance and a wide track. If you happen to be familiar with the original version of this uh, fourth generation design, then you will notice a few detail changes on close inspection. Uh, the restyled bumper incorporates these smarter corner cutouts, and there's a revised lower grille which is chrome trimmed on the base iconic models, but is sportier looking on this plusher RS line variant, thanks to this F1 style full width lower front blade. As for the lights, well, indicators have been incorporated into the distinct C-shaped front daytime running lights, and all models now get the brand's full LED pure vision headlights, uh, the beam range of which has been increased by 30%. So get comfortable and have a look around. What will you notice? Well, there's now a bit more of a premium ambiance, and that's thanks to upgraded trim and upholstery, and little extra touches like eight-color ambient lighting and a rimless electrochrome rearview mirror. Perhaps more significantly though, Renault's listened to commentators like us and separated out the ventilation controls from the central touchscreen, uh, which, like the display provided for the instruments, can now be bigger. Uh, plush of variants like this one get this smart portrait format 9.3 inch easy link central screen, uh, while through the three spoke leather stitch steering wheel you view a 10 inch driver information display with customizable virtual dials. With base iconic trim, both screens are seven inches in size though. TomTom -tom navigation is provided across the lineup, as is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration. 
And nice touches include the fact that, unlike a lot of other cars in this class, front seat lumbar support comes as standard. Uh, you'll also like the way that this lovely door trim mounted lighting strip changes whenever you change the cabin ambient lighting shade. Time to take a seat in the back. Well, we had quite high expectations here, given this fourth generation model's relatively lengthy wheelbase and the fact that it's one of the widest cars in the class. In the event, though, accommodation here is quite tight, and that's despite Renault's insistence that there's more shoulder room here than most rivals can offer. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, lift the tailgate, and you'll find that the opening is a good square shape, but the high sill will make it a bit awkward to get heavier items in. Inside the space, you get varies quite a bit, not only with body shape, but also with the uh, power plant that you've chosen to fit up front. With a conventional TCE 140 petrol engine, the standard hatch offers 473 litres. It's 563 litres with the Sport Tourer Estate. With the DCI 115 diesel fitted, the standard hatch offers 394 litres or 504 with the Estate. With this uh, E-Tech plug-in hybrid powertrain installed, cargo space falls significantly by 116 litres over the TCE petrol, which means that in this E-Tech Sport Tourer Estate, we have 447 litres to play with. Folding the 60-40 split rear bench in this Sport Tourer model, that is done with these useful side cargo wall catches. It reveals a substantially larger load area, of course, although it is a bit of a pity that the seats don't fold completely flat. Uh, this E-Tech plug-in Sport Tourer offers 1,408 litres of total capacity. For reference, that's a significant 290 litres more than you get if you ordered this PHEV drivetrain with Renault's slightly pricier Capture small SUV. Uh, with any petrol-powered Megane Sport Tourer equipped to base Iconic Spec trim, including the E-Tech variant, you'll get a fold-flat front passenger seat, which, when it's pushed forward, will give you the longest load area in the segment, around 2.8 metres. The more heavily bolstered sport seats that you get with RS line trim uh, don't allow for that feature. <laughs>